The first reading from the book of Numbers recounts an episode from the journey of the people of Israel through the desert on the way to the promised land. It was a pedagogical move on the part of God to teach the people how to lean on God, on his providence, because unless they had learned how to lean and how to trust in his providence as they were going through the desert, they would have never really welcomed the Lord in a very concrete way when he gave the ten words of life. And further on, they would have easily lost the promised land. But this episode shows that they are worn out and completely uh, overtaken by um, the dullness, heaviness of the journey with patience worn out. They reach a point that God allows for them to voice what's inside of their hearts. They start grumbling and complaining ascribing to God malicious intentions, considering him the cause of their disgrace and their sufferings as they are going through the desert. What's the answer? God allows those fiery serpents to come out. And it can be now even visible that really they were super vulnerable, unable to handle the journey through the desert had God not helped them all along the way. You see, often we may not even realize how many things God has saved us from. <clears throat> On the other side, we'll be able to see sometimes in the lives of other people who might have gone through a similar circumstances, we find out that God was there. I was in a very similar or even sometimes the same situation and God had intervened the other in, in, in a different way. Already I can uh, point out two events uh, in the last three years that I witnessed. It was a question of at least two to three seconds of big accidents, one in front of me, the other one right behind me on a highway. And I just saw this huge cloud of smoke, the car spinning, um, really, I mean, all the debris on the highway. It was a question of two, three seconds. Why not me? The Lord said, I protected you. You could have died. You could have ended up at the hospital paralyzed. And you wouldn't have me here speaking to you today this morning. <laughs> but to say that now the Lord, working with the uh, Israelites, lifts his hand from above their head saying, you don't get it. I've been protecting you all along the way. Now watch what happens when I take a step back. The serpents are coming back, coming out and biting them, and they are completely powerless in front of them. They are being bitten, they are being um, uh, aggressively attacked, and they die. So, okay, now we are completely unable to um, remedy, to handle, to get rid of those serpents. At that stage, they humble themselves in front of God, and ask Moses to intercede for them. Because oftentimes we need to be bitten to go through some kind of tribulation to find out we cannot do it on our own. We have sinned. We have taken a wrong turn. We have complained. We have grumbled. Lord, save us. That's a critical word. Because a human pride can be uh, so self-enclosed that it may actually uh, bring a person to say, I will never cry to God. I prefer to die here, but will never humble myself in front of God. 
which is a diabolical, the serpent's poison. But this poisonous snakes that started biting them on the outside show that they have a snake inside. A poisonous one. The poison, which is the sin. The poison that makes them see things very bleak and dull and heavy. The poison that makes them curse God, grumble and complain, and then they turn against each other. Then they become wolves towards each other. That's the poison that we call the original sin. Extremely dangerous. Once it's given a stimulus inside, it becomes diabolically destructive for everyone. Because the devil's wish is that we turn against each other and against towards ourselves and destroy God of life in us. His plan of love for us. So the poison is not so much on the outside that the serpents were the manifestation of, but the inside of their hearts. Not by chance. Jesus says, from the human heart proceed licentiousness, fornications, greed, and all the 14 vices. And these make the man impure from within. The Lord never says, okay, it's from without, but you're goodies, you're nice and sweet uh, people. No, from within. Saying your hearts are sick. And if God allows this poison to come out, it will be really very hard to stop it. Only the Messiah, Jesus Christ, is able to do it. So now the cross is actually the manifestation of the answer of God. We reject Christ. We push him out. We say to him, you have evil intentions towards me. I don't want you in my life. But the cross is the yes the affirmative statement of God towards us. Who wants to say to each and every one of us, even though you reject me, without even realizing how bad you can end up without me, without my presence, without my hand upon your he head, without my assistance, I will be there for you. In what sense? When you convert, when you turn back, when you humble yourself in front of me and look at me with faith, then you will understand that I'm not there to condemn you. Your sins are pulling you down and pushing you away from the source of happiness. God is the source of life and of salvation manifested in Jesus Christ. Specifically, we hear in today's gospel. No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man, descended. He came down. For what reason? So that contemplating him, looking at him by this word. To believe, as we already know, aman comes from amen, our leaning on, supporting on the Lord, making him the uh, pillar of our existence, thanks to him, we can come out from any slavery and even what's more important, the interior slavery, which means the poison, will be extracted from us because he took upon himself our viciousness, our maliciousness, our wrongdoing Christ took upon himself. And so that's why he's lifted up in front of us. So that now we look at the Lord. We look at him who is on the cross, who took upon himself uh, all the evil of the world, but not generally speaking, but of each and every one of us, our sins. Now, the only thing I'm asked to do is, number one, not to deny it, not to conceal it, not to play a poor little victim, not to pretend I'm a good person, but to say, I have been bitten. I have this poison in me. Please, Lord, lift me up. Save me. 
protect me from the serpents that are biting me, rather within me. And leaning on him, making him the foundation of our lives, we are finding out that he's there to save, to deliver. Because this word that we already got used to, the salvation, is not some generic thing that one day will be saved and will go to heaven, which is an ultimate step. But more than anything else, saved from the evil that is within me and also without, given that I surrender to him. I place my life in his hands. And that's critical to understand. That's why the Son of Man was lifted up so that everyone, not two or three or five, but everyone who believes, once again, believes in him may have already now immortal life divine life. And so, even going through the desert, going through the moments of desolation, we are not perishing because we know Christ is with us. As once a family uh, was going through a very challenging time and the husband ended up to be bedridden with one of the neurological uh, diseases and Cardinal Dolan recounts the story in his, in his uh, book when he says that he went to visit that family and bedridden husband was there. He was only able to move his eyes and their priest stood right there above, um, we may say at the back of the um, bed. And all of a sudden, uh, the six, sick person's eyes were very uneasy. And the wife said, Father, could you move aside? Because you are blocking the view of the crucifix that is on the wall. When my husband is looking at the crucifix and has his eyes set on Christ crucified, he's at peace because he's joining interiorly his sufferings with risen crucified and risen Christ for the salvation of many people. And for that priest, it was the best lesson of what the power of the cross is all about. To conclude, St. John Paul II, speaking about genuineness and unconditional love, because that's how the love, agape, should be understood, he says, you will not find love, this true love, without the cross. It is impossible. And then, you will never be able to lift up your cross without this love. The cross is present there, but with Christ and his love, we can lift it up knowing that it is he who helps us carry it.